Hallelujah. <laughs> Salvation and glory. My Lord. Honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. Yes, the Lord our God, he's omnipotent. The Lord our God, he is wonderful. Come on, sing. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Salvation and glory. Honor and power. For the Lord our God, for the Lord our God is mighty. Yes, the Lord our God, yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. Say the Lord our God, the Lord our God, He's wonderful. He is wonderful. Come on, now, toast all praises yes, to the King of Kings, and the Lord our God. Come on, Sopranos. Hallelujah. Come on, let's celebrate it tonight. Any tenants in the house who want to lift the Lord? Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Honor and power.
Tells me 
Well, it was about eight of us. Eight young people who are inspiring, who have, who are who are just trying to figure life out. But Mr. Malone took about eight of us in for our Sunday school that we had every Sunday. So it made a joy to go to church. But they saw this little underachieving young man who went to a predominantly black high school. They saw something in him. And it took a little extra time in that. And he shared his dreams about wanting to broadcast. In 1986, I started working at this team program called the Jet Set. As a result of that, I went on to have a career in media in different areas for the last 35 years. Today, I am doing a program, a team program right now for Cleveland.com. As a result of that seed, Mr. Malone, Mr. Malone planted in me 35 years ago. I'm, I got a crew running that program today. And I told us I had to be here for Mr. Malone. Also, came out of that too. We're going to have the National Association of Black Journalists Convention coming in in 2025, which is the largest convention in the world. Again, I'm part of it because of that seed, Mr. Malone was planning to be this We won chapter of the year back in. 2015, again, as a result of Mrs. Malone planting that seed in this underachieving young man who went to a predominantly black high school who saw, she saw a light and a vision in me. And I see the light and the vision of Scott, uh, Michael, and Eric. We haven't seen each other in a while, but we're going to do something about that. We're going to stay in touch. And I see this wonderful village of family here at that time, because I know Mrs. Malone and Mr. Malone plant that seed within you. So I just want to thank you. There's a harvest. You plan to see there's a harvest. Well, the harvest is now born. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. Come, come, come over there. You all can come at the same time, you can come at a time, or just make a cube and you probably need one another for support. So. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mike Malone. I'm the eldest of the sons. You know, it's hard to believe just looking at <laughs> My brothers and I, uh, we, we both smiled and we cried. And we smiled. I personally laughed and cried. I remember all those clothes she just put me in. And those collars that were so big, you couldn't tell if it was, it was a shirt or just one big giant collar. Or the plaid pants, pants and suits. Or the hairstyles she would try on me. That was not a high point in my life. I still cry about that one.
smiles because, as many of you know, my mom was a therapist and she practiced her techniques on us. Well, that she wasn't, <laughs> wasn't very obvious about what she was doing with us. We smiled because we knew at the end of the day all the sacrifices and her hard work that inevitably made us who we are today. We smiled because she had such a positive and profound impact on so many people, just as one of them. We smiled because, well, she was our mother. And lastly, we should all smile. This is a time for us to remember her life and the time we spent in her presence. And celebrate the joy that she brought to each and every one of us. Truly a Proverbs 31 10 woman. She was a wife of noble character, worth far more than rubies. Mom spoke with wisdom as he watched over the affairs of our household and never ate the bread of idleness. Mom set about to work vigorously. to listen to others and share their personal issues with them truly was a gift from God. God gave us all gifts and talents, but not for the personal gain, but for benefiting others. As I continue my own personal journey with the Lord, I'm coming to understand how much training a mother had to do with us to become the man men that we are today. She gave me life and love and having a hard time holding back the tears to share with you what was needed to raise three boys. Love, joy, peace, patience. Well, you definitely need self control, my dad, though. <laughs> definitely. What can you say, bad or negative, about the woman that held herself and others to a high standard? It was those high standards that made us, that she poured into us as children. Lessons like, the sky's the limit for you, but you will need to work hard to make those dreams come. Everyone here was touched by her in a unique way. But it was her style and grace that really made that lasting impression on all of us. I wasn't going to talk very long when I came up here. But I started things off with my mother being a wife of noble character, which she was, too. However, to me, she was a mother of noble care that I will forever miss here on this earth. I love you, Mom. And I will find you in the resurrection.
Thanks everybody for coming. Christopher Malone, by the way. I'm the youngest. Not the baby. Connection that you know, the youngest has with the, with the mother that there's, there's no other connection. Because you're the, the one that she really, she really dotes on, and she affects, she has a specific, specific connection to, you. and probably. Couple of weeks ago, my brother and I, Scott, and myself, we came and made our way to the Arabs. We get there, open up the opportunities to find the files, the mock files, all the people she counseled, the other social work practices. That's the type of person she was. Even though she kept that Still going through, we're getting deeper into this first unit. We find stats of over every period of life. Some of them you can find back in One of these is going away. The one we all organize to be friends and family. Three of these, some of you here. For many of us, they're the first trip abroad, even the first time you can. We're still in unit one. We're even further back. We find all these trophies, school accolades, awards, every period of our lives. We have an house. Bunch of sports trophies. None of them won. I don't know if you heard But even then, she kept.
process took a lot longer than we and it probably should have because we had to stop every few minutes and run the test over the times and had a lot of crappy trips, graduations, and all the wrong new projects. But all this stuff we need to stop the show. This is, this is what she would have wanted for us to just be ourselves. Blessings, family, loved ones, church members, friends, all who have come together to say to the family and to reflect on the passing of our dear hero alone. I am honored to share in these moments of reflection as a tribute to Carol's, Carol's legacy and a testament to the wonderful moments she won. By your presence here today, you are a firm, a well, a life well lived, and a woman well. I came to know Carol here at Office Day and remember her faithful presence and worship services at church activities and her faithful service. Carol served as the chairperson of our Child Protection Committee for several years. And the United Methodist Church requires that all congregations have a Child Protection Committee. Carol expertly chaired this committee and provided trainings and opportunities for the August Day congregation to be aware of this important ministry and to adhere to it. I also knew her as a social worker and a fellow Case Western Reserve University alum. Although she was in private practice and I was in the public sector, we had a connection to caring for children and families who needed support. As I began to think about my sharing, I realized our lives were connected in so many ways. We were both from Georgia. She from Covington, wherever that is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Georgia, and I'm from Columbus. Carol loved flowers, so do I. And Carol made beautiful arrangements that were used here at Auburn State on occasion and used elsewhere. We both were wives of members of the Golden Eagles Men's Club and attended many events together, including picnics and annual winter dances. As noted, Carol loved to travel, and so do I. 
One of the greatest things, Eric, that she blessed me with was to respond to my inviting myself <laughs> to Eric's and Nana's wedding in Ghana. I remember we were sitting right back there behind me, my, my husband Henry was sitting there. And she was saying um, that uh, Eric was getting married. And so, as has been said, and as you can tell from the testament of her son, they almost seem like triplets, actually. Right. Um, she loved to sing the praises of her special son. She always shared updates on what they were doing, how they were doing, and where they were. So one day she told me that Eric was getting married in God and repeat like that. So I started to, to think and to thinking about how I would love or how I had always longed to go to that. So boldly I said, I would love to go. And she picked up on him and she said, come with us. And I was already packing my bags in my mind. I will never forget that wonderful experience and was only saddened that Elton was unable to attend. So they came to our house afterwards to look at pictures and to share a meal. I served some potato salad, some chicken and some green, and I made hot water cornbread. But she, they didn't know what that was. I was like, you from Georgia, man, and I was cornbread. Anybody know what that is? <laughs> But, um, and every time I made popular cornbread, I was let go of them. Yes, Carol Malone was a beautiful and gracious lady, and I thank God for giving me such a special And So I leave this message with her sons, her daughters-in-law, grandchildren. Continue to make your mother proud. Remember the lessons that she taught you. Share them with your children to share with their children. Be grateful for the heritage you receive from your father and mother. Create a new legacy that honors your heritage and lives on into future generations. Try not to be sad. You will miss her, but live your life as she did, so you will see her again as she has taken up residence in her heavenly home. And I'm sure she has already spotted the place and claimed it for you. Continue to fill with love and share it with us. May God bless you, strengthen you, sustain you, and comfort you. We love you. And be sure that if you need us, I'll stay family.
cheeks that made her cry. She felt such pain, some spoken anger. Before, before I 
before I started singing, but it didn't work out. But God knows and he knows my heart. And I just wanted you to know, I thought she was one of the sweetest people I ever met. And she always had something nice to say to me. And I, I couldn't say anything better than what she would be there. Thank you. Amen. Promise you, I'm not going to be wrong. There's not a whole lot that I can say that's going to add much of value to what's already been said and to the life that has already been lived in, uh, in our midst. Let us pray. <clears throat> Loving and gracious God, now may the words of my mouth and meditations of all of our hearts our attempt in the sight of God, our strength, God, our redeemer. Let the church say amen. amen. The scripture that was chosen by the family, I'm going to read a few verses from Proverbs 31. Strength and dignity are floating, and she laughs at the time to come, she opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many, many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share of the fruit of her hands, and let the works praise and let and let her works be praised in the gates. I did not know Carol, as many of you have uh, knew Carol. I she. At the beginning of my ministry, she was still attending Aldous Gate, but she was coming with friends who would, who would pick her up. Uh, and as time went on, it became uh, more and more difficult to, to get her here. So I came at, at the beginning of her illness and was not able to be a beneficiary of all of the wonderful work and the, uh, the times that, that she was able, that she uh, uh, spent with you in, in the ways that she was able to pour uh, her God-given gifts into you. And so everything I say today is a reflection of, uh, of the friends, uh, Dr. Crowd and Tina, Tina and uh, Curly, uh, friends of uh, friends of uh, uh, Carol, who would take me up to see her and give her communion. And I just like to frame her life and take a few minutes to do that when Carol's life is. Described to me, the only image that comes to mind is that of a, of, of a diamond that sparkled. A diamond that sparkled. It, she just seems to uh, to do everything and to do it well. Then I knew that this was a confirmation because this, this is the baseball seat. And we, and, we, and we think of the baseball diamond. And so I got to thinking, the first base, the first base is, is family. Uh, I was told that the conversations always ended up around the three sons. It was always the, the update on what the young fellows were doing. What, 
where they were, where they were, and what, what achievements and accomplishments were, were uh, what they were working on. It was, it was always about family. And family is so important uh, because uh, we, we, we as humans are different from all of the other species. We, 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 we are not dropped. We are not hashed. Uh, it takes us nine months to uh, be in the womb of our, of our mothers. Then it's another, another nine months before we crawl. Another it's 12 months before we walk. About 18 months before we talk. And all of that takes place in an environment. In an environment that is geared to our health and to our well-being. And we don't think too much of it. So much could go, so much could go wrong in those few months. And that could change the trajectory of all of our lives. All of our lives could be changed in that in those in those short gestation moments. So family for us human beings is very important. So family is, is that first base. And everyone has said what a loving uh, wife, a loving mother, and caring and, and, and nurturing. Person Carol was. But we all know that in baseball, you don't win the game because you get to first base, do you? So you, you've got to get to second base. And second base is, 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 is how we broaden that family, how we, how, we, how we minister to the Josephs of this world who are not a part of our biological family, but, but also of a part of the human race. And that's what Jesus says. We have love, love, love God, and, and and love your neighbor as you love yourself. So we we uh, we don't just care for our families, but but we also care for others. We care for our neighbors. We care for our friends. We 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 care uh, for for the environment. We we care for the society. Where, where we are placed, where we are planted. Because there are many people who love their families, who, who do right by their families, who make sacrifices for their families, who go all out for their family, but they are, but they are bad neighbors. You don't want to live next door to them. They, they don't get to that second base. But Carol, as I come to understand the life, did the first base well, got the second base, and did that well also. And that's why her life has impacted so many. And not just those that she touched. And those that she touched will touch other people. Those families that she healed through her work as, as a therapist That's not just for those families. That's for those families, but also for, for the community where they, where, where they find themselves. The rippling effect of a good advice, a good therapist, a good mother, a good neighbor is limited. Is limitlessness. Limited. I'll get it right. It's unlimited. Let me put it that way. That's the second base. Third base is faith, family, friends, faith. And faith is the crown jewel of it all. We can love our families, we can be good in the community, and we can ignore the ground of our being. We can't ignore the, the source of all that is. We, we, we can't ignore the God who created everything that is. We can't ignore the fact we, 
we we sometimes we might be so good at at the family thing and, and so good at the community thing that 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 it, there's a potential to see how how good we are and what good we're doing and sometimes we just think that it's all because of us. But but for the grace of God, they go on. And so there's a family, and there's, there's a community, and the friends, and, and then there's faith. Carol was a woman of faith. She taught Bible school. She, she worked hard in the church. She read her Bible, and, and I'm told that, that she was an excellent liturgist whenever she was assigned to lead worship. And her calling her, her career, her, her, her profession, the, the things that she did at work was more than work. It was a calling, a calling to, to help other people, a calling to heal the brokenness, a calling to heal families, a, a calling to, to bring people together as we have all heard today. It was her calling because God loved her and God gifted her and God made her special. You know, we 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 are, are a combination of three things. We 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 are a combination of our genes, of our heredity, we are part of our environment. But there's that extra, extra, extra thing that God gives us that, that makes us unique. And you can have three brothers growing up in the same home, the same environment, the same mom and dad, and they each have the nurturing of, of that household. But, but God has given each of you something that he didn't give the other. That, that special thing that that you are to bring to the world, that, that if you fail to do that, no one else will do it. Carol had that special gift of bringing people together. And that gift was a gift from God, and she realized that, and she knew that, and that's why she grounded everything that she did in faith. Faith is where we end up. And so because of her faith, God has already said, well done, that good and faithful servant. And we don't need to leave, don't need to, to leave here without making a definite commitment to be people of faith. Because we did not create ourselves. And uh, we don't know what path we have. It's only by God's grace. It's only by God's grace that, that, that I take my next breath. It is only by God's gift that you take your next breath. I was leaving a memorial service last evening. It was dark. It was raining. And I was coming out of the parking lot of the church and making a left turn on a busy street. And my sister had said, maybe we should go to the right. But I said, well, I'm going to go on the highway, so let's, I'm going to go to the left. It's dark. It's raining. And someone thought it was a good idea to drive down a busy street with their light on. And I didn't see it. I saw all the cars with the light on. And my eyes were not that good anyway. I had two eye surgeries. But I did not see the car without the light on. And it was seconds, seconds away from, from broadsiding us on, 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 on my side. 
because someone chose to drive at night in the rain with no lights on. And I just said to myself, that's, that's how, that's, but for the grace of God, I would not be standing here today. So we never know. We never know, and that's why each day is a day to give our lives to God, because we never know. When I'm old in the house, we could be as young and sprite and wish your eye and everything. We could be called home at any moment. So today is the day of decision. Carol made her decision to love God, to serve God, to be in the right place at the right time, to let God use her to help other people. But that's what it's about. Carol was not doing what she did because she wanted to go to heaven. If you do what you do just because you want to go to heaven, that's, that's not living right. You've got to do what you've got to do because you've got to do what you've got to do. Because God has gifted you and God has said that, that I want you to love me by loving your neighbors. Serve me by serving your neighbors. It's it is not two different commandments, it's one commandment. It's just the flip side of, of the coin. We prove how much we love God by, by how much we love each other. And we know that hope can be hard to love, but God didn't promise to make it easy. He just promised to make it worthwhile. And that's why today we can claim that Sister Carol Malone is with God. Now. And so, God of all grace, your love never ends. When all else fails, you are still God. We pray to you for one another in our need and in every way of who mourn with us this day. For those who doubt, give light to those who are weak, give strength. To those who have sinned and mercy, to those who have sorrow, your need. Keep true in us the love with which we hold one another in all our ways. We Lord, we trust you, and with Christ on earth and in heaven, we honor you with our lives. O oh God, all that you have given us is yours. As first you gave us Carol, now we give Carol back to you. Receive Carol into the arms of your mercy. Receive her also and raise her up and raise us up into new life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray this prayer of thanksgiving. God, of love, we thank you for all with which you have blessed us even to this day. For the gift of joy in days of health and strength and for the gifts of your abiding presence and promising days of grief and pain. We praise you for home and friends and for our, our baptism in your church and we Faithfully live. Above all, we pray and thank you for Jesus Christ who knew our griefs, who died our death, who rose for our sake, who lives and prays for us as he taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us and lead us back into temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, power, and glory. May <coughs> God bless you and keep you. May God make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray.
Sunday in interment at, at the cemetery. We will be coming back here for the repast. The church has prepared uh, food for, for all of us. So please come back after the cemetery. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church <laughs> say amen. Yeah. Let the church let them say amen. If you believe the word. Let the whole church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church say amen. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. God has spoken. So let the church say amen. No. Thank you, Lord. God has spoken. So let the church say amen.
everybody say amen God, God has spoken so let the church, let the church say To what his word says, God, God has spoken. Let the church, Let the church say, say amen. 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 Ooh, yeah, yeah. Make this your response amen. to whatever he said from the healing of your body. No matter how you're feeling Or how your world is reeling Battle on through the night Cause you're gonna win the fight Even in the valley Or standing at your Red Sea Continue to say Cause your help is on the way Why God has spoken I heard him. So let the church say, oh, lift your hands wherever you are and let the church say, amen. Let the church say, God has spoken. Hallelujah. Let the church say, say, say.